Following the global outbreak of the novel coronavirus COVID-19, social distancing has become a necessary preventative measure to slow the spread of this easily transmitted virus. Millions of people are quarantined, causing many to feel suddenly very isolated and alone. So how does loneliness affect us on a microbiological level? Is there any hope for us or are we doomed? We humans don't have big claws, sharp teeth, or hard shells. We've evolved to feel safe by sticking together. Therefore, few things are more alarming to our systems than suddenly being alone. Just like how, when we're deprived of food, we feel hungry. When we're deprived of social connections, we feel lonely. Loneliness, like hunger, is a warning signal reminding us that we're not meant to be alone and encouraging us to form deeper connections. If we can't form deep social connections because, say, we're social distancing due to a global pandemic, our bodies go into survival mode. We start producing more cortisol, a stress hormone that keeps us alert to threats. Our bodies experience more overall inflammation, a way to prepare to heal any injuries we might get while out on our own without help. And our sleep becomes shallower so we can wake up to dangers in the night. These survival responses help us get through short, threatening bursts of isolation. But the longer we're lonely, the more these changes wear on our cells and organs. That's why perpetually lonely people are at higher risk for mental, physical, and emotional problems and have weakened immune systems. This means that youth in Canada are going to face remarkable uh, difficulties in in their lifespans, they're gonna face obesity, which in turn will affect their self-identity and their self-esteem, which, which in turn will affect their self-confidence in their future. This will also, this will in turn will affect their, their future goals, their personality, their self-identity, their, their means of income, the means of resocialization in the community. The, secondly, it's gonna affect their their physical well-being which in turn will affect their their confidence will affect their their motivation to go out in, into society get a job get a get reimbursed in, 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 into community and this all both of these conditions add, add up to the youth being self-isolating once again because they don't feel welcome. They don't feel the reason to reconnect themselves with others because they are depressed. They'll be, they'll have anxiety once again. They're gonna feel stressed because of the, the lack of, of, of abilities of getting, getting motivated once again to get a job, to get, get into good relationships, to reconnect with friends and family and, and social groups. All of this are gonna, is going to affect the future and, and including, including their lifespan and altogether. So what exactly can we do about it? So for the best part, uh, we can have, uh, offer youth good wellness programs where, where they can learn how to re-socialize themselves and get involved in, in certain sporting activities and maybe food activities where where you can earn, earn some money for losing weight which will promote promote healthier living and secondly we can also help them uh, during offering them sp special support groups where uh, particular communities can get together and form groups and share about how they how their socialization went through and how they uh, supported themselves during COVID and their experiences during their, their time of isolation. I feel the best part about, about isolation is where people can get together and share what their, <laughs> what their experiences were like to, to get them to talk about their problems and their fears and and to seek help and get back into into society and socialize with, with their friends and family. 
So what can you do to stay connected and healthy while practicing social distancing? First, take care of your mental, physical, and psychological well-being. While it's important to stay up to date on what's going on around you, remember to also focus on the positive. If you have negative thoughts or worries, don't ignore them. Instead, try acknowledging and accepting them and then discuss them with someone you trust. Breathing exercises, mindfulness, meditation, and muscle relaxation can also help your mental, physical, and emotional state. Exercise. Exercise is another great way to take care of your physical and mental health while in social isolation. Even though you may not be able to go to the gym, find ways to take walks, stretch, and stay active within your space. Find alternative ways to connect with others. There are many ways to connect with your family, friends, and others using technology such as video chat, text, email, calling, or the various social media platforms. Participating in safe and appropriate social media challenges can also be a fun way to help you feel connected. Interacting with people using online support groups can provide great opportunities for you to not only talk about how you are feeling, but also offer emotional support to others who need help coping with the pandemic. Stay active. Long periods of physical and mental inactivity can lead to depression and poor health. Find a project you can do around the house or create a routine of activities to look forward to each day. Limit screen time. Watching TV, browsing the internet, and playing video games can be great outlets, but too much screen time is not healthy. Manage your electronics usage and consider setting reasonable limits each day. If your work from home involves using a computer or phone, try to get up and look away from your screen periodically. Be mindful of unhealthy coping strategies. During times of stress and even boredom, it's easy to cope by turning to food and alcohol. Keep in mind that overeating or drinking too much can lead to unhealthy and harmful habits. If you find yourself turning to food and drink to cope, try using other strategies like meditation, taking a walk, or calling a friend. Find the good. Believe it or not, there can actually be benefits to staying home. For instance, if you find yourself with more time on your hands, it can give you an opportunity to begin new projects, achieve some of your outstanding goals, or even get some much needed rest and sleep. If you are staying home with children or other family members, it can be an opportunity to spend more quality time together. Try to stay active, healthy, and connected with others during this trying time. Quarantine doesn't have to be unbearable if you remember to take care of yourself and others during your time at home.